listening to the show that will keep you from falling behind during the week. With your hostesses with no ghostesses, Jackie and Belinda here for the Friday Catch-Up on the Paraclash Radio Network. And hello, everybody. Welcome to Week 30 with me, Belinda, and my fabulous co-hostess, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Hello. I'm in the title now. Oh, I'm so happy. Surprise. <laughs> I, I, I was actually sitting there just kind of listening. I was like, wait a minute. That sounds different. Where's the music? So I was about to flip the sound back on and go, Belinda, is everything okay? And then there's me. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. Yes, I was evil and got G to do a new one just for us. Thank you, G. Yay, thank you. Cool. Okay. <laughs> oh, cough, cough. Okay. Hmm. Where do you want to start? Hmm. Well, it is Doctor Who weekend again. It is. Yay, and it is Doctor Who week again. Woohoo! Woohoo! Yes. So, let's see. You just finished the God Complex. What did you think of it? Eh. Yeah, it well, was okay. Well, at least it wasn't. It was sad. <laughs> yeah, at least it wasn't sad. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, everybody, it's going to be one of those weeks again. Welcome to Friday Catch-Up. Exactly. So, <laughs> I don't know, I like the fact that they based the whole episode around that painting or picture or photo or drawing or whatever the heck it is. You know, the one with all, like, the the thingies, like they did in that episode. <laughs> <laughs> This is the part where everyone nods and smiles at the same time and goes, yes, Belinda, we know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, Belinda, I know exactly what you're talking about. Well, anybody who did watch the episode knows exactly what I'm talking about. You know, the one behind well, Castle's desk. In, in Castle, you know, he's got that painting behind his desk. Okay. I don't watch that show, so. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so um, the episode that's coming up for you now is called Closing Time. <laughs> yeah, I did it this time. Yay. And uh, so I would definitely give it a 10 out of 10. It was absolutely fantastic. It was hilarious. It had everything you could possibly ever hope for in a Doctor Who episode. Uh, All righty then. So don't miss this yeah, one. Yeah, so this one is... Yes, this is the one you should not miss under any circumstances. You can miss any other one, except for the last one. But, <laughs> yeah. Because that's where all of our answers are coming from. Well, maybe. I think they might end up making a bit of a cliffhanger. And then we'll all be sitting there going, <laughs> Well, actually, according to Stephen Moffat, which Stephen Moffat is a big person for lying, but what he said was... Um, all of the questions are answered, except for maybe one, because I'm evil like that. <laughs> one or two, or maybe five. Or five. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we had an ESPN moment. We did. <laughs> <laughs> except I hate sports. So, so do I. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I reckon this episode was probably the cheapest one they've ever made because they just ended up using the same hallway over and over and over and over again. This is true. And they didn't even show any of the actual fears. Like the Weeping Angels, well, those are pretty easy to make. They just have a bunch of statues laying around pretty much. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, well, I think the the most expensive thing they probably used had to be the, um, is it a matador? Manitou, I think. Manitor, yeah. I don't know. Whatever the big scary monster thing was. Magician. Haha. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, it wasn't a magician. No, they actually – the guy um, that they got for this is actually just about nearly that tall. They had to give him a little extra height, but he really is almost that tall. That's crazy. Yeah, and then they had to do a full-body uh, cast. The mask – um, that you see him wearing is actually moving. That wasn't CG or anything. It's an animatronic, animatronic mask. Um, there's someone sitting at the sidelines um, controlling the mouth movement, the blinking, all of that. Mm. Mm. I learned that from Doctor Who Confidential. Wow. Oh, I love Doctor Who Confidential. I think anyone who is a fan of Doctor Who loves Doctor Who Confidential. Yeah, because, you know, they do bad jokes, and they show you sort of the actors when their guard's down a little bit, and, you know, it's kind of yes. cool. And, you know, they also show you just a little bit of how they do things, and it makes you really appreciate the the work and the dedication they put into it. And the amount of effort that goes into it. I mean, technically... You know, you want to be really technical. It is just a kid's show. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's really bearing its bones there, but that's basically all it ever was. You know. And they've thought of everything. Like, I was watching one episode, because I watch them online because we don't get them in America. Ha-ha. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> don't worry, Belinda. Of course, just wait. The news is coming. Anyway. <laughs> You know, we don't get them in America, so I watch them online. And they were talking about, um, I think it was one of the earlier ones with Matt Smith. I don't quite remember which one it was. But they were dealing with details that a lot of people wouldn't have thought about. Like, when they show sequences inside the TARDIS, when it's moving around, you see everything shaking. There are people standing in the top, like, rafter with fishing lines moving all the... uh, components. Mm. I mean, the confidential for this past episode, that was kind of insane because, you know, that scene with like all the things at the tables, trying not to make too many spoilers here. Yeah, there was a person for every one of those things. Ah. Yeah, a bit scary. (laughs) That was probably the only part of it that was really scary. The rest of it was, I mean, it was a good episode overall. I liked it, and but then it got kind of sad, and you know, blah blah blah, and then it just kind of took a whole different turn, and it's like, wait a minute, what? Mm-hmm. And the bit with the thing, and and like the the what do you call it, and and the information, it's like, ooh. <laughs> See, I'm trying not to spoil it for those stupid people in New Zealand who haven't moved to Australia yet, just so they can watch Doctor Who a week earlier. But you know, or or move to England so you can watch it at the same time as everyone else. Yeah, no, we just want everybody else to be on Australian time. <laughs> it's easier that way. Well, that's <laughs> never gonna happen, Belinda, because your country sucks. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe, but oh well. Well, see, that's what's so weird to me because the top four countries really that bring in the most money are the United States, the UK, Canada, and Australia. So I don't understand why the United States, the UK, and Canada are on the same line, but you're not. Because Australia doesn't have the money to go and buy part of BBC and go, we're giving you the money now, give us Doctor Who. This is true, I guess. Mm -hmm. Which is shocking because America did. I know. Maybe that's what put you all into a recession. Probably. It was the BBC. (laughs) BBC is like, how can we really get them under our thumb? I know. We'll make them buy part of the BBC so we can go, no, you can't have Doctor Who on Labor Day weekend. (laughs) (laughs) And they'd be like, no, give us Doctor Who. (laughs) Give us our Doctor Who. Well, I mean, you know, Doctor Who is really, really picked up, though. and It's fantastic. Mm, it has. And I was really, really hoping that because it was picking up so much, because I don't know if the Confidentials air in Canada either, 
But I was really, really hoping that because it was picking up so much popularity that maybe instead of after the Doctor Who, we got the best of the Doctor, which was nothing more than talking about Matt Smith, which I'm sorry, but they're going to run his career into the ground doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was hoping they would start playing the Confidentials afterwards, but unfortunately, due to budget cuts, now they're getting rid of Confidential altogether. Well, hopefully they'll just give someone, hopefully not Matt Smith, a camera, and they'll just stick it onto the DVDs. Yeah, definitely not, not, not Matt Smith. No, <laughs> love him to death. He's a great doctor, but um, there was one scene in one of the confidentials I found it online, and um, they were, or they had given him a camera, and that he was. He was recording inside the Oval Office, and he was so excited about what was going on that he is, like, flailing the camera around, and you can't see anything, and <laughs> he's, like, all excited, like, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Isn't this cool? It looks just like the White House. Oh, my God, isn't this cool? And all you can see is big blur. Like, <laughs> pretty much, and he goes up to people, and he's like, look how small this camera is. Can you believe how small this camera is? <laughs> Oh my god. And then of course you get him and um James, the guy who played in the lodger, which is showing up in the closing time. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> you get those two together and they are insane. Ah I wonder what the confidential's gonna be like. Oh. Um well I can tell you one little spoiler. There's no, a no, uh, no 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 I wanna laugh. It's I, it's a little one. You have to watch it to really enjoy, and it's online anyway. So, anyway, right. it involves a miniature Dalek, uh, and a message from the Doctor to Craig. Uh, you know how small they can make those Daleks, hey? Exterminate! Exterminate! <laughs> exterminate the rainbow! <laughs> Yeah, so they're getting rid of Confidential. Well, that sucks. So hopefully yes. the petitions and the online forums and people jumping up and down and kids throwing tantrums will bring it back. I hope so because, I mean, and there is a huge support group. Like right now on Facebook, there's one. Um, there's a guy who um, he runs a really, really fabulous uh, Doctor Who group. It's called Doctor Who and the TARDIS by Craig Hurl. And um, he does, like, multiple pages. He has, like, one for the 10th Doctor, one for the 11th Doctor, all this. <laughs> one for David Tennant, one for Matt Smith. But he also now has a new group called Save Doctor Who Confidential. And it is picking up the pace big time. Ah, so there you go. If you watch Doctor Who and you like Doctor Who, go onto Facebook, find the Save Confidential page and like them or whatever the heck you've got to do. Exactly. Or you can also send in um, complaints to the, which sounds so British if you think about it, send in a complaint form to the BBC. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what Australians call British people? What? The whinging poms. <laughs> so, complaint forms for the British people? Mm, I'm sure it's worded very harshly. <laughs> Probably. You know... They they say complaint form. Do you know what we would call that in America? What? Your bitch form. <laughs> <laughs> Quit your bitching and come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. <sighs> okay, so now we've had our giggle. Do you want to get a bit serious for a little while? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, so we'll get serious um, for a little while and then we'll, we'll sort of stick something in there that's going to make your face plant. So, <laughs> Yes. I away. warn you now. Run. <laughs> no, I don't run, run very very far away. <laughs> and for those people who skip past my songs in the YouTube, that's not supposed to happen. You're supposed to listen to the songs. <laughs> and I know you do it because I heard you say it. <laughs> <coughs> well, for the for the longest time to keep the <laughs> I think I was doing everyone a favor, but to keep the YouTube videos from being pulled down, I was cutting all of the songs down to like twenty seconds. <laughs> and we got a lot more views, but now that the whole songs are playing, the view count's gone down. <laughs> My posted music is not bad. Everybody else is just weird. 